Welcome to the NCW Libraries Variety Show. Thank you for joining us. Let's get our show started today with a bilingual story time. Then we'll hear from a special guest at Chilean PUD with a fun STEM activity. Hola amigos, hi everyone. My name is Ms. Claire and I'm here for another bilingual story time. Yo soy Ms. Claire y estoy aquí para otra hora de cuentos bilingües. A ver, ¿podemos sacar las manitas? Can we take out our hands? Okay, a cantar. Let's sing our story time song. Abre las manos, cierra las manos, vamos a aplaudir, dir, dir. Abre las manos, cierra las manos, posalas aquí, aquí, aquí. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open them, shut them, open them, shut them. Them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. We be in. Nice job, everyone. All right, friends. Well, today I'm going to tell you a story called A Strange Creature, based on a book by Mon da Porta. Hoy les voy a contar un cuento que se llama Un Bicho Extraño, basado en un libro de Mon da Porta. All right, let's get started. Vamos a comenzar. Mira que mira mirando. Encontré... Un bicho extraño. Look what I found. A strange, mysterious creature. Era parecido a un huevo. Gordo arriba y abajo, flaco. It looked like an egg. Fat on top and skinny on the bottom. Encima tenía los pies. Y un rabo largo y delgado. On top, it had some feet and a long skinny tail. A los lados, las manos con los dedos estirados. On its side, it had hands with fingers outstretched. Y en vez de obligo, una nariz con bigote recortado. Instead of a belly button, it had a nose with a neatly trimmed mustache. Y abajo, los dos ojos. Sin pestañas y sin cejas. And below that, two eyes, but no eyelashes or eyebrows. Y para completar la historia, se sentaba en las orejas. And to top it off, it was sitting on its ears. Yo no sabía decir qué era aquel bicho tan raro. I did not know what that strange creature could be. Pero, a darle la vuelta al cuento, if we turn it around, ¿qué podría ser? What could it be? Era un ratón. Lo vi claro. It was a mouse. I saw it clearly. Pero, un rayo que cayó lo dejó desorejado. A lightning bolt came and struck its ears off. Del susto cerró los ojos y quedaron cerrados. It was so surprised, it closed its eyes and kept them tightly shut. La nariz la llevó el viento y el bigote de seis pelos. The nose was blown away by the wind and the six-whiskered 
mustache. El viento llevó los brazos y las manos y los dedos también. The wind blew away its arms and its hands and its fingers too. Tanto, tanto se asustó que perdió los pies y el rabo. It was so scared that its feet fell off and its tail too. Y quedó como un huevo, mondo, lirondo y pelado. And it looked like an egg again, plain and simple. Pero a darle la vuelta al cuento, but if we turn it around, ¿qué podría ser? What could it be? Y colorín colorado, este cuento se ha acabado. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story. Espero que hayan disfrutado el cuento. Now, I have a little song with movements for us about five little mice. Ahora vamos a cantar una canción con movimientos sobre cinco ratoncitos. So, let me show you the movements. Les voy a enseñar los movimientos. So, first, we are going to make five little mice with our fingers like this. Vamos a hacer cinco ratoncitos con los deditos, así. And then we are going to wiggle our ears and our nose. Y luego vamos a mover las orejas y la nariz. And then we're going to open our eyes and look around to see if there are any cats. Vamos a abrir los ojitos a ver si hay gatos. And then we're going to eat our cheese really quickly. Vamos a comer el quesito rapidito. And then we are going to pretend that we are a cat looking for mice. Meow. Y luego vamos a imaginar que somos gatos y estamos buscando ratoncitos. Meow. So we're going to sing first in Spanish and then in English. Vamos a cantar primero en español y luego en inglés. All right, listos? Are we ready? Cinco ratoncitos de colita gris. Mueve las orejas, mueve la nariz. Abren los ojitos, comen sin cesar. Por si viene el gato que los comerá. Meow. Five little mice with tails wide awake wiggle their ears and give their nose a shake. Eyes wide open, they quickly munch before they get caught by the cat for lunch. Meow. Nice job, everyone. Muy bien. All right, well, you know what? I think it is time for a goodbye song. Ya vamos a cantar la canción de despedida. A ver, sacamos las manitas otra vez. Let's get out our hands. Cuando pongo mis dos manos para arriba, mis dos manos tocan el cielo. Cuando pongo mis dos manos para abajo, mis dos manos tocan el suelo. Arriba, arriba el cielo. Abajo, abajo el suelo. Mis dos manos dicen chao y se van a descansar. When I put my two hands up, they can touch the sky. When I put my two hands down, they can touch the ground. Up, up to the sky, down, down to the ground. My two hands say goodbye and they go off to bed. Adios amigos, bye everyone. Hola amigos, hi friends. Miss Claire here for another Felt Story Friday. Yo soy Miss Claire y estoy aquí para otro cuento de Yelto del Viernes. So today we have a special letter of the day right here. Tenemos una letra especial del día aquí. So let's see, in English, what letter is this right here? It's the letter C. Y en español, ¿qué letra es? letter C with our hands. Podemos hacer la letra C con la mano así. Muy bien, nice job everybody. Hmm, can we think of any animals that start with the letter C? Podemos pensar en algún animal que empieza con la letra C. 
Well, I can think of one. Just keep open if I can know. A crocodile, un cocodilo. And you know what, friends? I've got something else here that starts with the letter C. Tengo otra cosa aquí que empieza con la letra C. Una cueva, a cave. So we're gonna sing a little song today about a crocodile who goes into a cave and peeks his head out to see what's going on outside. Vamos a cantar una canción que habla de un cocodrilo que se mete en una cueva y asoma la cabeza para ver qué pasa. And this song is going to be in Spanish, base en español. All right, so let me show you how the song goes and how the movements go too. Les voy a enseñar la canción y los movimientos. We're going to need our crocodile hands. Vamos a necesitar las manos de cocodrilo. Un cocodrilo se metió a la cueva. De pronto asomó la cabeza. Miró para un lado y al otro. ¿Y qué pasó? ¿Y qué pasó? And that's how the song goes. Y así va la canción. So let's see if we can try it again all together. And we're going to find out what happens when the crocodile peeks his head out. Vamos a cantarlo otra vez, todos juntos, y vamos a ver qué pasa cuando el cocodrilo asoma la cabeza. All right, ready? ¿Listos? Sacamos las manos. Let's get out our hands. El cocodrilo se metió a la cueva. De pronto asomó la cabeza. Miró para un lado y al otro. ¿Y qué pasó? ¿Y qué pasó? Se sorprendió. Oh, I got a little surprised. Se sorprendió. All right, let's try it again and see what happens next. Vamos a cantarlo otra vez para ver qué pasa. All right, get out your hands. Sacamos las manos. Un cocodrilo se metió a la cueva. De pronto asomó la cabeza. Miró para un lado y al otro. ¿Y qué pasó? ¿Y qué pasó? Se escondió. Oh, he hid. Se escondió. All right, let's try it one last time. Lo vamos a cantar una última vez. Get out your hands, everybody. Sacamos las manos. Un cocodrilo se metió a la cueva. De pronto asomó la cabeza. Miró para un lado y al otro. ¿Y qué pasó? ¿Y qué pasó? Se durmió. He fell asleep. Se durmió. Buenas noches, cocodrilo. Good night, crocodile. And that is it for today. Eso fue todo para hoy. I'll see you next time. Adiós. Hasta la próxima. kids and grown-ups, this is Sheila from Okanagan County Public Utility District, the PUD. We bring electricity and broadband internet out to our communities. This week, we're working with North Central Regional Library's virtual summer program, and I'm going to bring a bit of science right to your screen. In this first video, we're going to talk about static electricity. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of static electricity, for example, lightning is static electricity. And maybe you've shuffled across a carpet and touched a doorknob or another person and you got a shock. Well, that's static electricity too. For this first experiment, all you're gonna need a couple of styrofoam plates and a cloth or a rag. Now, those are all it takes to build up a little static charge on these plates by rubbing that cloth on each plate. Once you've done that, we can start the magic. And do make sure you've got a real good charge on these. I'm going to set one upside down, and I'm going to see what happens when I put the other on it. Nothing in particular until... Magic. No, not magic. It's static. There are other things you can do with styrofoam plates and attaching them to things, especially if you've got a lot of hair. And you want to be a style trendsetter. 
magic and stylish. Here's another experiment you can do at home. Grab a balloon, blow it up to about this size, maybe a little bit bigger, and then get some salt and pepper and sprinkle it out in front of you on the table. Not too much, don't make too big of a mess, don't get me in trouble. Anyways, remember how that static worked on our hair before? Do that again, get a really good charge. And not only does your hair now look fabulous, but you're ready for some science. All right, without touching the salt and pepper, wave the balloon over the top. You'll start to see things start to move, especially the pepper, which will start attaching itself to the balloon, but no salt will. Why does that happen? Because the pepper is so much lighter weight than the salt. The electric charge on the balloon will attract the pepper, but not the salt. Now, if you have a bigger balloon, well, it'll attract both. Hang on, I gotta get my hair done. You start to wave that around. You can see how much quicker it picks things up. And both the salt and the pepper. That's because the bigger balloon has a bigger electrical charge. Well, this has been our lesson on static electricity. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I know I have. See you next time. Wow, what a great way to learn about static electricity. Now, let's hear some book recommendations for children, teen, and adults. Hi everyone, Marlene from North Central Regional Library here, and I am here to tell you about one of the teen summer reads picks for 2020. And that is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. So during the Civil War, Jane McKean is born, but two days before she's born, the dead rise again in Gettysburg and Chancellorsville, zombies. And this changes the war and the nation. So by the time Jane is a young lady, certain children are required to attend combat school. Jane is able to attend combat and etiquette school. And this means she could probably become an attendant, which is, um, someone who serves a wealthy family, not just in combat, but in social situations. And it doesn't matter that Jane's mother is white. It doesn't matter that Jane's mother is rich. This is what society expects, and so this is what she has to do. But of course, she doesn't really want to do it. She wants to go home to Kentucky. She doesn't want to stay in Baltimore and finish this school out. But people, families in Baltimore start to go missing. And so she finds herself in the middle of a conspiracy where she might just have to fight something a little more powerful than the zombies. So if this sounds interesting to you, guess what? We have this available in both audio and ebook. And the way you do that is you go to ncrl.org. This is what our website kind of looks like. These tiny little icons right here, I made them bigger. We have it available on Hoopla and Overdrive in both audio and ebook form. So have fun, check them out, have a great day. Hi, I'm Mallory and I'm a children's librarian at Wenatchee Public Library. I'm here today to share one of our picks for the 2020 middle grade summer reads list, The Parker Inheritance by Varian Johnson, which was a Boston Globe Horn Book honor book in 2018 and a Coretta Scott King honor book in 2019. When Candace moves to Lambert, South Carolina for the summer, the last thing she expects is to stumble into a mystery. But when she finds a mysterious letter addressed to her grandmother in the attic, she and her new friend Brandon decide to solve the puzzle and find the fortune left behind by a mysterious benefactor. Who is James Parker? And what is his connection to the Washingtons, a black family driven out of town in 1957 by a horrific act of violence? This book is a clever puzzle mystery, perfect for fans of Ellen Raskin's The Westing Game, but it also deals with serious issues like divorce, bullying, and racism in the past and present. 
To read the Parker Inheritance digitally, check it out for free using Overdrive and Hoopla. book or that group of books that absolutely changed the way we saw our world. And I want to share with you some of my favorite books. I'm Dr. Allegra Hart. I'm a licensed naturopathic physician and author of Nourishing Space Within Essentials of Self-Care. And these are books that are available through the virtual lending program through North Central Regional Library. This place is awesome, and I gotta say, I grew up in this library, so exploring it and learning all of the things that I possibly could get my hands on was a big part of my childhood. So let's go through these books. We're gonna just touch base on them really, really quickly. The first one is a very popular book in the entre entrepreneurial circle. It is called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This is a really good book about cultivating your highest version of yourself. And it is not about finances, although they speak a lot about that, but it is about being the best person you can be and really being conscious about the life you're creating. The next one is A Wrinkle in Time. This is a, a classic book and it helped me understand that there are so many different ways of looking at what life presents us. And if we can be objective, we can learn at a whole nother level. The next one is Grain Brain. This is a great book that really introduced to mainstream public about how impactful gluten and grains can be on our systems and the way that it affects us. In Defense of Food is another great book, Michael Pollan. Um, he again brought to mainstream this discussion of food and how important it is for it to be real and for it to be something that we are closer to and closer with our natural laws rather than the highly processed stuff that most standard America eats. The next is Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. Really anything Brene Brown, her approach of looking at life and looking at how you're showing up and looking at the integrity that you are bringing to every moment of your life or not is a really good thing and helpful for absolutely everyone. And next one is The Book of Joy. And this was Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama. This is such a beautiful union of two highly intelligent men who understand the dynamics of joy in spite of obstacles that life bring us. And we all could use more tools to help us cultivate that. So many fantastic book ideas. Thank you for joining us today on the NCW Libraries Variety Show. Our libraries, mail order, and curbside services are now open. Also, with our library card, you have access 24 hours a day to all the resources on our website, including digital books, movies, music, magazines, newspapers, and so much more. Head to www.ncwlibraries.org to get started and find us on Facebook for all the latest news, events, and fun. See you next time, and remember, be kind and read on.